Hello and welcome to this session on IFRS 16 compliance with the Crowley's Asset Calculator. My name is Luis Lopez. I am the product architect of this solution and subject matter expert in lease accounting. So let's jump right in. Today we're going to be reviewing example 16 from the illustrative examples. Specifically, this is a modification that increases the scope of a lease by extending the lease term. The leasee enters into a 10-year lease for 5,000 square meters of office space. The annual lease payments are $100,000, or currency units, payable at the end of the year. The interest rate implicit in the lease cannot be readily determined, so the leasee will discount this, this lease using the incremental borrowing rate at the commencement date, which is 6% per year. So we have a resulting payment schedule for $736,009, and note that this is a ordinary annuity or a payment in arrears. So the first payment is discounted. If this was an annuity due, it would not be discounted. Then we have the liability amortization schedule, which the beginning balance will equal the present value of the future manual lease payments, as well as the asset depreciation schedule. At the beginning of year seven, the leasee and lessor agreed to amend the original lease by extending the contractual lease terms by another four years. The annual lease payments are unchanged, but the leasee's incremental borrowing rate at the beginning of year seven increases to 7% per year. We see the payment schedule equals to 597,130. The lease liability amortization schedule in this case also equals that present value of future, min of future minimum lease payments for the modified terms. However, the asset depreciation schedule does not equal the present value of future, future minimum lease payments. And later on, we're going to review the calculation. But basically, what is happening is the adjustment on the lease liability balance is what drives the value of the right of use asset either up or down. Before we get into the calculation, let's review the balances before the modification. We see that the lease is uh, changed in the be beginning of year seven. So in year six, we have an ending balance of 346 and 511 for the lease liability. And our asset depreciation schedule ending balance is 294, 403. These are the balances that we're gonna be they're gonna, we are going to be using to calculate the adjustment on the lease liability and the right of use asset. So to begin, we have our new present value of future minimum lease payments for the modified payment schedule. This is for the this is for the modified terms for an additional eight years and the incremental borrowing rate of seven percent. From this, we have to subtract the lease liability balance before the modification. This will give us the increase to the lease liability of two hundred and fifty thousand and six hundred and nineteen. Then we have to calculate the right of use asset balance or the right of use asset adjusted balance. To do that, we take the beginning or the right of use asset balance before the modification. We increase the right of use asset balance by the same increase in the lease liability. As you can see, we're bringing down the number of 250, 610, 619, sorry. And this will give us our adjusted right of use asset balance, so 545 and $23. These are the balances that we are that we are targeting to get with our application. So now that we've reviewed the, all the calculations and schedules, let's go back to the application and enter the same terms and let's uh, see if we get the same results. So now we're on in our Dynamics 365 instance and let's navigate to our lease module and then let's go to our lease summary form. This is where all of our leases will be located. located. To add a lease, just click on new, and let's enter a lease with IFRS 16, example 16 description. Our lease classification will be IFRS 16. The fair value of the lease does not matter as much for IFRS 16 purposes, but it does for IAS 17 and, and US GAAP purposes. The implicit rate in the lease is not really to be determinable, so we're gonna leave that as blank. And then the system will use the incremental borrowing rate to discount this lease. So let's enter for the first year, I believe that was 6%. Then this lease was also compounded on an annual basis. So let's change the compounding interval to set to annually. And the payment frequency will be set to annually as well. The lease term will be for 10 years and the asset useful life will also be for 10 years. 
There was no transfer of ownership or unique asset. Let's have the lease group be billings. The, um, the annuity type, we should set it as ordinary annuity. This is because the payments are due at the end of the year, as I mentioned earlier. We can leave the currency as US dollars and select just any vendor for example purposes. There were no additional considerations to the right of use asset in the example, so we'll leave these fields blank. And then we'll enter the commencement day of the lease. Let's say this is at the beginning of the year of 2017. Then let's enter the payment schedule lines. This is a very simple lease beginning in 2017 and ending in 2026 for 10 years. And it's just a simple $100,000 per year. So after we review all the lease uh, information, we can save this record and create the lease. We have one more chance to review the information at any additional financial dimensions. After we're comfortable with all of our inputs, we can go to functions and create the payment schedule. Note that a payment schedule was created for 736,008. This is a unrounded number. If I go back to my presentation, you will note this is the same present value of the future, future minimum lease payments as indicated in the guidance. So now that we've reviewed the payment schedule and we know that the total present value is correct, we can confirm this schedule. As soon as we confirm this schedule, our asset depreciation schedule and our lease liability amortization schedule will be created. So let's go take a look at those. Let's look at our liability amortization schedule and we see that beginning balance of $736,000 and $9. And so the schedule looks like it's being calculated correctly. Then we look at the asset depreciation schedule as well with the same balance. And it's been depreciated on a straight line basis. So after we reviewed our schedules and they looked, cor they looked correct, we can now go to go back to our leases and you will note that this lease has, has, has not yet acquired because it was not yet recorded in the balance sheet. Let's select this lease and click on initial recognition. What this will do is create our journal entry to recognize this lease in the balance sheet. We can select this journal entry and we'll see that it we'll see that this lease is being recognized for the present value of the future minimum lease payments. Let's click on post. And let's go back to our lease. And you will note that this lease, when we refresh the page, will switch from not yet acquired to open. Let's look at our liability transactions. And we have that 736,000 for our liability and the same amount for our asset or right of use asset. So now that we are we have recognized this lease in the general ledger. Let's go and issue payments, interest, and depreciation on this lease. So we are only going to issue payments and interest and depreciation on the first six years of the lease. And that will take us to 1231 2022. We're going to summarize this entry so that we don't have hundreds of line items or of different journal entries. And then we are going to select that lease. And so let's click on OK. And a summarized payment schedule will be created for 600,000. Let's go to that lease, go to journals and invoice journals. It will see the first six years were paid with the click of a button. You can click on post. If we go to our liability transactions, you would note that we have the beginning balance minus the payment. Now what we need to do is accrue for the interest expense on that lease. Now let's, so let's go back to our lease journal batch and select our liability amortization schedule from the beginning of the year to the end or to the modification date of this lease. Let's summarize the entry so that we don't have hundreds of different journal entries and let's select that lease. And so what we're going to see is a lease um, with or a journal entry with a balance of, I believe, is 
210, and 502. So now that our journal entry was created, let's go to our lease summary form and let's view that general journal. And so that is our journal entry to accrue for the interest expense for the first six years of this lease. That looks good, so let's click on post and let's go back to our li liability transactions. So you will know that we've recognized this lease, we issued payments, and we have accrued for the interest on this lease. This will result on an ending balance before the modification of 346 and 510. If I go back to our payment ske or schedules, we have that 346 and 510. So now let's go to our asset and what we need to do is issue depreciation journal entries to uh, account for the depreciation on the right of use asset. So let's go back to our lease journal batch, our asset depreciation schedule, and let's create journal entries to account for the six, first six years of depreciation and let's select that lease. Okay. So what we're going to expect to see is a depreciation journal entry for 441,000. Let's go to our lease summary, select that lease, and that is what we have, a depreciation to the right of use asset and a credit to the contra asset account for the same amount. So after we review the entry, it looks good, and then we can post this entry. Let's go to our asset transactions table and we'll see that we have the initial recognition minus the right of use asset depreciation expense. This leads us to a balance of 294 and 403. And let's take a look at our schedule. Yep, that is the correct balance that we were trying to achieve. So now that our lease is fully accounted for for the first six years, we can adjust the lease for the modification in the lease terms. So let's go back to our lease and let's click on adjust lease. So this lease, if you recall, the incremental borrowing rate will be increased to 7% and the remaining lease terms will be for 8. Another thing we will need to change as well is the modification date for 1-1-2023. And we'll also need to change our payment schedules, payment schedule lines to start in 2023 and this will go all the way out to 1231-2030. So after we review the information we can save and create that lease. Note that our lease was created with a new version and so we can keep track of the historical information on our lease. This The first version was for 10 years and for 6% and the second version is for 8 years and for 7%. So let's go and create our payment schedule on the second lease. And the payment schedule equals 597 and 130 rounding up. This is equal to, if we go back to our modify schedule, equals to the 597 and 130. So now that we're comfortable with that balance, we can go back and confirm this schedule. After the schedule is confirmed, our right of use asset depreciation schedule and our lease liability amortization schedule are created. And so you will note that the beginning balance of the lease liability amortization schedule will equal the 597,130. However, what is interesting is that our asset depreciation schedule is being calculated at 545 and serial 23 or serial 22 on 76. And this is really interesting because this is the value of the application doing these calculations for you. If I go back to if I go back to our presentation, we have the right of use asset balance before the modification, then we have the increase in the lease liability and the adjusted right of use asset balance for 545, serial 23. 
And that's how we come up with the beginning balance here in the right of use asset depreciation schedule. So after we review the schedules and they all look good, we can go back out to our lease summary form and we can go to function and click on lease adjustment. This will create a lease adjustment journal entry for the 250,000. You will note that this is for year of 2030, 2023, so that is not yet open in our general ledger. So let's switch this back to just say 1231, 2017, which I know it's open. So we can click on save and let's uh, go out, make sure that the information was safe. Refresh this, yep, 1231, 2017. Let's select this journal entry and click on post. So the adjustment journal was not now posted. And let's look at our liability transactions table. You would know we have the initial recognition minus the lease payments plus the interest expense. And then we have the lease adjustment increase for 250, 619. Our lease liability ending balance is for 597, 130 here at the bottom. And that is the liability amortization schedule beginning balance for the modified, the, the modified lease. And now let's go back to our asset transactions table and we will see that we have the initial recognition minus the depreciation expense, and then we have the lease adjustment increase. And this leads us to a total balance of 545 and 023. So let's go back, and that is the schedules. That is the balance that we should be receiving as call out by the accounting guidance. So this is how you account for a lease modification uh, on the Crow Lease Asset Calculator. As you can see, the balances are coming, are being calculated correctly, and you're also saving time, not having to calculate all the schedules automatically, and having the ability to go back and view the different versions of your lease. I hope this was useful, and please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.